Hi there, my beautiful Thrivers. Welcome back to another video with Thriving in Chaos. It's time to make my Christmas nails. And while we're at it, we're gonna answer some of your most burning questions that you guys asked in last Friday's video. So thank you for being here. Click that subscribe button, like the video, and let's go. Hi everyone, I hope you guys are doing good. We are just days away from Christmas. Oh, I cannot even believe it. I hope you guys are ready. I hope that there's no one here that's not ready because it's just so crazy out there for people doing their last minute shopping. Before we do get started in this video, I'm going to go ahead and ask today's prompt a card. If you're new to my videos, this is a prompt a card. It's basically a conversation starter. So I'll ask and answer the question on the card in this video and you guys can put your answers in the comments below. It's just a little something to help us get to know each other better. So today's prompt a card is... What was the best thing that you bought at a yard sale? Now, I have to admit, I don't do yard sales very often. I've done a few, but not very often. And the only thing that I can remember actually buying from a yard sale was this rolling filer system. It looked really, really cute. I actually still have it today, and that was probably about 10 years ago. <laughs> but what about you guys? What was the best thing that you've bought at a yard sale? All right, so I just wanna preface this by saying that the winner will be announced somewhere in this video, so stay tuned, it'll pop up somewhere, and uh, good luck to everyone. And I just wanna reiterate that all the videos that I am dropping in December have a chance to win a $15 Amazon gift card. This is my big thank you for reaching 3,000 subscribers, and it kinda of is coupling with Merry Christmas. So all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my channel and then leave a positive comment in the comment section down below. And every comment that's in this video will be eligible to win that gift card, which I'll announce tomorrow. Now that we got that out of the way, what are we doing today? We're gonna to be answering some of those questions that you guys have put in the comment section of Friday's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be decorating up my Christmas nails. So I'm glad you're here. I know this is not budgeting. This is not up the alley of many of you guys. However, this is something I needed to get done anyway. And I thought what better way to um, answer your questions than to go ahead and do my nails. I'm tackling two things at once here. So, I appreciate everyone that did ask questions. I hope that I can answer them to the best of my ability. And in addition to that, I know already that there's gonna be a lot of you asking what products I'm using, where did I get them? Everything you see here, I got off of Amazon. I'm an Amazon shopper. I'm really big on convenient shopping. So everything that you see, Amazon. And I will link everything in the description below for you guys. So it should just be a quick link to where I bought the stuff. And hopefully that helps pre-answer any questions that you guys have. So I'm going to stick to the questions that were asked. And I'm probably not going to give like a tutorial on what I'm doing. You just will get to watch me do it, I guess, um, while I answer questions. So I do have like all of the questions here. I just put them all into one you know, little section. And some of them were actually very, very similar, if not identical to each other. So I'm going to start with those that had the most questions, which was, let me just do this. Panda loves waffles. She says, when did you decide that cash stuffing and budgeting was going to be a part of your life? What made you decide to go with cash budgeting instead of digital budgeting? And then... Jennifer Romero, looking forward to watching your Q&A. How long have you been using the envelope system and what motivated you? And then Charlene Kreitz, I think. Fantastic video. How long have you been cash stuffing and what started you on this journey? Allie L. How did you hear about cash envelope system and why did you start? And then Brittany Rayner. My question I've always wondered is what got you into budgeting? So 
that seems to all be in the same vein so I figured I would just go ahead and answer those I just realized that my phone is almost dead so <laughs> let me just plug her up <laughs> So, what got me into cash stuffing? Let's start there. I was just doing my normal thing, watching YouTube one night, and I think I'm missing a color. Let me grab another color. Hold on. You had to know I had to have my black. Okay. Back to the question. So, I was watching YouTube one night, and for some reason on my For You page, um, what was that? I think her name was Pink X Budgets one of her videos came up on my For You page. Oh my gosh, this is so hard to open. Hold on. Okay, I had to put some muscle into that. Alright, so it came up on my For You and I don't know why I clicked it, but I did. And I just watched and I was like, hmm. Cash stuffing. That's interesting. And so I started watching a little bit more and then I um, just started like searching. I don't know why. I just went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> searching what is this how does it work what are people doing to make that work for them how does that work with like digital spending because at the time that's basically the only way we were spending money was through our card so I was like curious um it's not that I had never heard of that method before because I believe my mother-in-law and father-in-law also did that method for a while, but they didn't really talk about it much. They did mention it, but anyway, so I started researching a lot and realized that this was helping a lot of people. And at the time, like we weren't struggling necessarily, um, but we were like living paycheck to paycheck. A paycheck came in, we paid the bills and we spent all of it. And then had to wait for another paycheck. Like it was not fun in my opinion to live that way. And I always knew in the back of my mind, like if something ever went wrong, then we're messed up. <laughs> like, what are we going to do if our refrigerator goes out or our air conditioner goes out or anything that costs a lot of money? What are we going to do? Are we going to be in debt? Are we going to have to do credit cards because we just don't have cash sitting around? Um, for those occasions. And so the more I started thinking about it, the more I was like, I think, I think I might want to try this. And it happened to be like right after, I think it was right after we did taxes of 2020. I think 2020, right after we did taxes of 2020. Yeah. Or 2021. I think it might have been 2021. I don't know. You guys will have to look back because my first video was using our tax returns um, that we got that year. Um, and we did get a, a substantial amount in our tax returns that year. And so I was like, I want to use that money to start the cash envelope system. I, thought, I felt like that was really the only way we could do it because of the fact that we... Um, we lived paycheck to paycheck. So it's not like I had money just sitting around for that. And so I decided I'm going to use that. I'm going to take a portion of that and put it in my account and let it be our quote unquote account buffer, which was not named that back then so that we could do digital spending, but I would just pay it back with whatever I had saved in the envelopes. And then the rest of it, which I think was like 7000 or something crazy, I was going to start the cash envelope system. So I went ahead and I bought all the things that I thought that I would need. And I um, did that very first cash envelope stuffing, everything from zero. It was kind of fun. At the same time, it was not fun because I was trying to also do a video about it. Because I thought... If I make videos about it, then it'll keep me accountable to doing this. And that's just something I knew about myself. I would get bored with it otherwise. <laughs> and that's just me. So I was like, I'm going to also do a video, I think. So let's do that. 
So that's what I did, and I ended up having to do that video like several times because it's just not working out for me. I don't know. By the time I was done and actually got the video done semi-right, I had cashed up like three different times the same money. <laughs> it was kind of... I was so frustrated. I was about to give up. I was like, I am so frustrated with this. It's just not working. I was having technical difficulties. I was having all kinds of stuff. I think even still to this day, the video itself is just wrong. It's just bad because the voice didn't match up with this or that. I mean, I just was having so many issues. You know, I, I was new. Didn't know what I was doing. So... That's what got me into cash stuffing was just watching Pink X Budgets. And why I decided to do cash is because I knew that um, our habits are t our habits tend to be that we we spend. We have it, we see it in the bank, we spend it. Like that that's just how we've been for so long. So I knew that if I just left the cash in there and just tried to make imaginary categories um that I I knew it wasn't going to work out that way I just know us so I was like I want to do this this is how I want to do it and then really I think the first six months or so was just trying to figure it out what worked for me because not necessarily everything that worked for everybody else worked for me so I spent that first six months figuring out how to make videos, figuring out how to edit videos, figuring out how to do the cash envelope system, make it work for our family and what that's going to look like going forward, making changes as I went. Like, yeah, it was, it was an, an experience for sure. As far as like my husband, he's always on board with anything that I want to do. That's just... That's just how he is. If I say, I want to try out doing this diet, or I want to try out going to the gym, or I want to try out this or that, he is always so, so supportive. Like, I cannot, I cannot say that enough. He is extremely supportive of all the things that I ever put my mind to. And I wanted to make YouTube videos, and I wanted to... Um, do this cash envelope system and he's like all right go for it let's do this and to this day he's completely fine with me just doing all the th all the finances which I've kind of always done all the finances in the house so I'm like a homemaker and I take care of our bills and all of that he just needs to know the bottom line <laughs> type of thing and that just is what works for us so he was completely on board, completely fine with it. He's like, if this is going to help us get better with saving, get better with doing things, then absolutely I'm on board. So it's always great to have somebody who's supportive with all your ambitions that you might have. And I think, I think we're pretty much the same in that. I'm the same way with him. All right, so let's see. The next frequently asked question that I got was very similar um, with each other. How did you introduce the idea of cash budgeting to your husband, which I kind of already answered, but I've always wondered and never asked anyone, how on earth do you set up your camera to film from this angle? What do you use to record these? Share the sorcery tricks. So I am going to answer that question, but maybe in just a little bit. Um, that was from, let me see, Beanie Budgets. And then Andrea Pinheiro, 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 Pinheiro. My boyfriend and I play GameCube. Question A, what was your husband's first impression of the idea of cash stuffing, which I kind of answered. My husband and pl I play Elder Scrolls. Um, how do all of your kids feel about the zero budget cash budgeting system and do I actively teach them or lead by example? 
and then Lay asked, what was your husband's first thoughts about the cash budgeting method? Did you have to convince him to get on board? And was he okay with letting you handle all the finances? So again, that's kind of all in the same vein. And I kind of did answer the hubby question from the get-go. Go me. But as far as my kids go, they don't really care. <laughs> That's just, they don't, they don't care about what I'm doing. Um, they think it's cool that I'm on YouTube and everything, but as far as like the cash envelope system, they're, they're kind of used to it now because it's been about two years, but, um, I don't know. They don't really care. And now that I'm making them their own binder, they're actually excited about it. Um, now that, because, because we're making it their own, you know, like, I'm working on my 18 year old daughter's Attack on Titan binder, which I haven't been able to at all this month, sad, but eventually it's going to be finished. I think she only has like four envelopes that left that I need to make. And then once she has it, she can cash stuff to her heart's content and she's excited about it. I think I really do. I think so. And I know that my youngest daughter also is looking forward to it. And my son could not care less, to be honest. He saves money like nobody else in this family. Well, I don't know. My youngest daughter saves money too, but he just, he just does. He saves a lot of money. He's a good saver. But, um, yeah, that's about it as far as the kids go. Sorry. Got a got into a little zone there. Let's go to the next question. All right, let's start at the top. How has cash budgeting shifted your life? And this is from Darcy Williams. Hmm. Let's just say I am no longer paycheck to paycheck. I'm a month ahead on my bills. I have thousands of dollars just saved. I mean, they have their purpose. They have, you know their category where it's my kids savings, my mine and my hubby savings, our retirement, all these things, our emergency fund, all of that, just thousands of dollars just sitting there for those occasions, for those reasons, for those purposes. It is amazing to feel that way, knowing that I mean if if it really came down to it and our livelihoods depended on it. I have money there. Like I do. Granted, I wouldn't want to take from that if I, if I didn't have to, but it's there in case, in case I needed to. And that's, there's a security in that, that I've not ever felt before. And also just knowing that I am also saving for my kids so that when they do branch out and start on their own, they're not going to just start at zero because that's, that's not easy. And I'm not saying that I am going to fund their entire adult lives. No, but it's nice to have a little head start. I think everybody, everybody deserves a little head start. So as far as how it's shifted my life, I think differently. I don't spend frivolously even though sometimes on WTF Wednesdays, it looks like I do. <laughs> but my focus is mainly on groceries and the needs, the essentials. And I always am now thinking twice about purchases that I want to make um, that aren't necessarily needed. Like, for instance, I've been sitting on the idea of buying a a, an ice maker um, because I want that soft ice and our refrigerator ice maker doesn't work and we've just been making our own ice and I would love to be able to have an ice maker that's dedicated to making ice like I feel like that would be so cool but I've been sitting on that thought for over a year like I, I'm not pulling the trigger on it and before I probably would have <laughs> but I'm like it's not needed it's wanted. 
but there are other priorities at stake here. And do I really want to spend three, four hundred dollars when that could be going to this, that, or the other? So I'm definitely more conscious now on spending. I think sometimes that gets on my hubby's nerves, to be honest, because we used to be frivolous spenders. If we thought it, we bought it type of thing. And um, I think that sometimes he wishes we could go back to that lifestyle. Not necessarily that it was a good lifestyle, but it was fun because you can just spend, you know, of course. But he knows. He knows. I've heard him say many times, like, this has changed our life. And he brags on me all the time to friends, co-workers, family members about how it's changed our life, how what I'm doing is just, it's so important and so needed. And so I think that overall, the shift is um, being better prepared and not living paycheck to paycheck. That is, it's a breath of relief. And I don't know if there are some of you that are watching right now that are currently living paycheck to paycheck and you know, you know how it is. If something came up and you needed to spend money to fix that something in order to live comfortably or whatever, then bills would be pushed to the wayside, late bills, maybe even something being turned off. And that is, it's a bad feeling. I understand. I have been there. And um, sometimes it just feels like those things are unavoidable. So this cash envelope system, even though it is fun to watch on YouTube, it is very vital to getting out of that rut of living in debt or living paycheck to paycheck where one thing could trigger an avalanche of not only financial crisis, but uh, the emotional part that comes to that. It really does take a mental toll on you. So I would say I'm just happier. <laughs> I'm happier. There's less to worry about knowing that if something really happened, I have a backup plan. While I'm waiting on that other set to cure, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Let's see. I do want to answer the film setup one, but I'll do it in a little bit because I do want to show you how I have it all set up. And that's going to require me moving the camera. So I'll wait. Let's see. Leah Finn. Oh my God. I love your videos. You made them so beautiful. Oh, wait. Your envelopes. <laughs> You made them so beautiful. Do you sell them? And if yes, where do you go to order? Mm, I'm so sorry. I do not sell them. I just did them for myself. It's just, you know, I just wanted something different. I'm artistic. I like color. I like something visually pleasing to look at. So, I mean, granted, everybody's envelopes are so cute when they have the vinyl words or whatever, and some of them even have decoration, but I just knew me. I knew me that I am very artistic. I like seeing color and seeing this. I don't know. It just, this is what, this is what speaks to me. So I just hand drew them with Sharpie markers. I have an entire playlist on my channel showcasing these all of these and this is just one binder but just showcasing these so that you guys can see how I made them and what I've done um, to make this happen even the words are sharpie markers so this is how I've just managed to keep this very interesting for myself and to keep me motivated and going the artistic side of it so unfortunately that means I I don't sell them. They're, I don't have an Etsy shop or anything like that. I kind of wish I was confident enough to do that, but I'm so not. <laughs> I really am not. I, I know that I feel like my envelopes look good for me, but I am very critical when it comes to doing something for somebody else. I don't know that I would ever feel like it's good enough because it is hand art, you know. 
So anyway, let's keep going. Chelsea Sutter or Suter, what game do you and your hubby play and do you stuff your YouTube checks? Well, I think by now you know that I do stuff my YouTube checks. And if you missed that video, it's, it's, it's Tuesdays. As far as the game that my hubby and I play, we play this game called Brawl Stars. It's a mobile game and it's just so fun. We love it. We love playing together. Um, it's, it's really a good time. It's fun. All right, before I get started on the second coat, let me find another question. Let's see. Okay, here we go. I love all your videos. I make sure not to get behind on yours. This is from Manda Budgets and Stuffs. My question is, what kind of pets do you have? She has a Chihuahua, a Chihuahua Dotson mix, a Mastiff, three cats, a ferret, and a squirrel. Woo, girl. <laughs> and I thought I had a lot of animals. So I have four dogs. Um, I have two that are sisters from the same litter. They are partial Australian shepherds, um, part something else. We don't know. We don't know what the something else is. And I'm pretty sure that they might have two different dads because they look nothing alike. And I just wanted the runt of the litter and my hubby wanted the biggest one <laughs> and we could not decide. So we got them both and they have been with us for about 12 years now. And they are each other's, they're they, they are their sisters. They argue like sisters. They also are constantly with each other. They can go from growling at each other because one of them's looking at her food to sleeping in the same bed, despite the fact that they have two different beds. So they're funny. And then I have a Dotson. He's a long-haired Dotson. Oh my gosh, he's adorable. We got him when he was about nine weeks old, and I adore him. He is my baby, and um, he's about 10. Yeah, I would say about 10 years old, and getting gray. Oh my gosh, makes me sad. As far as my Australian Shepherds go, um, one of them is blind as a bat and yet still manages to be able to walk and she uses her other senses so she, you would never know she's blind until she has just a moment where she'll run into something but if we move furniture around it's over <laughs> it is over and then we have um, another dog who is one of the Australian Shepherd mix, um, her, one of her puppies cause they both got pregnant. And so we kept him and my daughter, actually my youngest just begged. She wanted to keep him. She fell in love with him and that was it. She was, she was bonded with him and didn't want to let him go. So we did, uh, find homes for the rest of the litter, but that one stuck with us. So he is her baby. She takes care of him and has taken care of him all by herself for the past four years. It has definitely taught her responsibility. And then in the same vein of that, we also have a cockatiel bird and it is my middle child, my daughter's cockatiel bird. And she is solely responsible of that animal. She has to clean his cage and feed and water him. He stays in her room. All of his toys and goodies and stands and all of that is in his room, in her room, should I say. And she um, also buys his food and his stuff. Well, sometimes I buy the food too to help out, but um, his toys and stuff, she will splurge on him. And then we do have one rooster. We used to have a lot of chickens, but over time, they they don't have a very long lifespan. But over time, all of our chickens have passed or got attacked by random wild animals. Um, we live in a lot of woods, so 
uh, there's a lot of wild animals in there and if they catch wind of a chicken they're all about it and so right now we have one hanging on and it's a rooster and he he's my baby too like he hangs out with me when I'm outside and just chilling vibing so that is it as far as our pets go which is enough in my opinion All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up. I'll speed this part up a little bit so that I can get to the design part of this and then I'll continue asking some more questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask the next question, which was a good question, I felt. So this is from, let's see, Abby Jones. It said, I wanted to ask, I know you're working to ensure the girl's mental health needs are met. I was not sure of the age or interest your son may have in seeing or talking to someone. I know you talked in the past about you and hubby using it a few times. Just curious, no judgment or anything of that nature. Everyone has their preferences on how to deal with things going on in their lives. I thought this was a great question. So... I have three children. One is 22. That's my son. Then I have an 18 year old daughter and a 16 year old daughter. So my son is 22. And, um, let me just say he has never had to have a problem with expressing himself ever. In fact, he's my most vocal child, and I will say that he um, he is autistic. He has high-functioning autism, and his entire life has been therapies. He's had um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, mental therapy, like all sorts, behavioral therapy, speech therapy. He's had lots of therapies throughout his entire life. So I feel like he's, you know, he's been in the therapy world for a long time and he definitely has no issues whatsoever uh, voicing the way that he feels. He is very confident in himself, in his abilities, which his abilities are amazing. He has a, tr a Twitch stream on Twitch with some fellow buddies where they do streaming, which is so cool. If you guys want to check him out, it is J Squad Streams, I think. J Squad Streams. I think all one word. If I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. But if you guys want to check him out, I don't know how often he streams, but when he streams, it's pretty fun to watch him game and be with his buddies and stuff like that. So anyway, he is very confident and successful in the things that he does. And if he does have issues or is dealing with something emotionally, he comes to us and we all talk. We talk about it. My girls, on the other hand... Um, as they got older, they started internalizing and we all knew, we all noticed hubby, me, and I'm like, okay, let's talk. And we we're all very big talkers in this family. And while they would talk to me about things, I think that it could never go deeper because they were maybe afraid of, of reactions or, um, scared in this time in their life of voicing things and because they're confused not knowing what is what and where um, you know it really started with TikTok and I don't want to blame TikTok um, but that's once they started going on TikTok suddenly their worlds were confusion and I, I hate it for that reason I know that it's it can be good entertainment or whatever but what it's doing to our children is a whole other story. And I knew that I can't protect them from everything. There's going to be a lot of this confusion in the world. And 
rather than blocking it and put plugging our ears and saying, la, 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 the world is not there and we're good, I want to face it head on. So definitely therapy was the right call for them so that they do have that ability to talk and figure out themselves without a world telling them who they should be or what they are or anything. I mean, come on. It's too much for kids. It's too much. There needs to be something done about it, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, so the reason I don't have my son in therapy is because frankly, he just doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. If I felt like he did, I definitely would. And we had a good laugh about this because I did read this question to my hubby and he's like, you know, you should bring up that letter that he wrote to me one year. Um, and I, I was like, I really should do that. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> one year, my son wrote my husband a letter and it was for no reason but I want to read it to you. I'm going to not show it to you just because it does have some personal information, which I will skip over um, as far as like location goes. But I do want to read to you this <laughs> letter from him. I don't know the year. I wish I did. Judging by his handwriting, we're looking at maybe 10 years ago, 10 or 11, 12 years ago, something like that. So I want to read it. It says... Dear Dad, I know how much you love me, but all the yelling, forcing, and trying to make us do stuff like servants, not cool. By the way, we don't yell in this house. <laughs> he did not like having to do his chore, and I believe on this day, he did not want to clean his room, and... uh <laughs> Let's just say this is the letter we got. And then he goes on to say, well, at least you're my best homie in the world. Sadly, my mom keeps forcing us to be a genius and keeps on planning to visit. I will leave that part blocked out every single day. Extremely not cool. By the way, I had a job in which I took my kids with me to work. I was an office manager and I took them with me because I homeschooled them. They had an entire room set up right there in the office where they could do their schooling and I could be there to help them as I did my work. I know I was lucky to find a job that was willing to do that. So for him, being forced to go there every day was torture. He goes on to say, but mom is a sweetie and all, but she keeps on forgetting what fun really is. I'm sorry but that's the truth. And yes, I think so. What matters is, oh, this is so hard to read. I like dad the most. I love you, dad. <laughs> it's awful. So that, my dears, is my son. He has always been very vocally, verbally aware and able to tell exactly how he feels. And we talk through it and we're good. So, with that being said, we don't have him in therapy because he doesn't really need it. If he needed it or even expressed a desire to need it, we definitely would in a heartbeat. But both my girls have expressed a desire for it. We have expressed a desire for it. We talked about it thoroughly. We found the right therapy place and um, they are loving it. They are loving it. It is definitely helping a lot. So... I wanted to get that question out because I thought that was a brilliant question. It's hard to like put all of that into a video as you're cash stuffing. So I'm glad that you asked that. Now I have a full confession. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing with these nails. I know I want them to match. But as far as the design, I know I want snowflakes because the pants to my Christmas pajamas have snowflakes. They're black with um, this, all three of these color snowflakes. So I don't know. I'm going to wing it and we're going to talk and I'm going to wing it and hope to God that it looks okay. So let's see. Next question. This is from Zuzette. 
Hey girl, hey, question, how do you plan your vacations and how do you know how much to save? So this is where I love going on vacation with my friend <laughs> and her family. She is a planner, that is her personality and it is extremely helpful because while I am a planner, I can plan things, I, I'm very lackadaisical, I'm very chill, we don't plan much, we just go with the flow, um, but she is a planner and she will do all the planning and stuff, like as far as this cruise goes, it's all her. She has planned this whole thing, um, she has gotten all the discounts we can get, she's told me the bottom line for mine and hers and how we split that up and because we have to get several rooms because, you know, she has um, three kids. I have three kids. So, yeah, it's it's been a, a very, I'm very grateful for my friend. I'm very grateful. So, anyway, that's how this cruise has been. She's done all the planning and bottom lines and all the things. I just got the number from her. So, that's that. But when I'm planning like for beach vacation, it's just looking online for the type of area that we want to be in, the beach houses or condos, whatnot. And then you kind of can get a bottom line of how much that is. And then I save it. And then I also just kind of in general know like how much I'm going to need to get down there as far as gas, food, a general thing again. And um, just kind of wing it, really. Just kind of guesstimate how much I'll need and then plan accordingly. All right, what am I going to do with this nail? I'm nervous. Let me get another question so I'm not so nervous. What's my favorite snack? This is from Claudia Potasmi. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's from Claudia. Okay, my favorite snack. Hmm. I'm I'm going to say that's a tough one. Okay, so favorite snack, let's see. I would say hmm. So it just really depends on your mood, you know? Like you can really be craving um sweets and if I'm craving sweets I really like ice cream cake chocolate cake but it's like once I get that craving like satisfied then I probably won't touch it again so if I make a whole cake or whatever yeah it's like hmm I just made that whole cake but for what I don't know this doesn't really look as blue once I put it on here, does it? It's like it turned white. Is it coming across that way on camera? I don't know. But, um, and then salty. I also like salty. I like, like, chips and salsa. Chips and cheese dip. I like... Guys, I don't know what I'm doing with this nail. <laughs> Wish me luck. Um, I like also... As far as like... Um, nuts. I love almonds. I love cashews. I'll eat those things by the handful. I also like snacking on celery and... Um, crunchy things you know what I mean definitely with dip though but yeah as far as that goes that's pretty much it um I don't eat very much I don't know if it's just a me thing but I don't eat very much there's days where I can go a whole day until dinner and just not eat anything and I know that's not healthy but I don't know I just don't feel hungry, so I'll go a whole day, and then I'll be like, okay, dinner time, and then I'll eat then, but um, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not a big snacker 
in general. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to make a snowflake, but I don't know if I'm accomplishing that. Kind of. Sort of. Anyway, let's go to the next question. Let's see. What's your savings goals for next year? How did you get start started in cash stuffing? And what's your favorite hobby? All right. So saving goals for next year. I would love, love to be two months ahead. So I do want to focus up on that. I want to make sure that I get enough to be technical two months ahead in my bills. So that I will always have two months worth of, of bill money in my account at all times. And then I just want to keep going with that three months all the way up to six months. I would love to be six months, but next year I definitely want my, I wish that my goal could be met on this. Um, I feel like it would be really, really good. I really just want to, that's my main goal. And then of course we do have a cruise that we're going on. So I, my goal for next year, starting in June, I would need to have $4,000 saved by June. I think that's really my main goals. Um, but as far as savings goes, definitely saving up another, I think I have like 18 or $1,900 to save for to be two months ahead officially. So I really, really want to accomplish that. Your last question, what hobbies do I have? Well, you're watching one right now. I love making my nails. Like, this is relaxing to me. This might be stressful for a lot of people, but to me, this, this is relaxing. I could sit here and do this for hours. And same with my envelopes. Like, when I'm making envelopes, I could sit there and draw for hours. Um... So really it's just artistic type things that I'm, that I would consider as my hobbies. I'm not like an outdoorsy type of person. I like being home in the comfort of my home. I like being with my family. We love going and seeing movies together, which really was affected when COVID happened. So we couldn't do that as often as we usually did. Now that things are opening back up, we've kind of started doing it again and we love it. We still love it. So that's why I also have been putting money in our, our family fun and our date night because that's fun. I love doing that with my family. And then also just being a mom. I know that's going to sound weird as a hobby, but I've been a mom for 22 years and I love it. I've loved it every single day. Of course, there's days that are harder than others. And that just comes with life. Not everything's going to be easy. Figuring out how to overcome the not easy is the fun part. We can work through anything. So I'm a simple girl. And probably... Just the way my hubby likes it. <laughs> oh, so cute. I love this. When you first started out, did you start stuffing bills or savings challenges? I will say that I just started stuffing bills. Like, I wasn't even aware of this thing called savings challenges. Um, and I really still don't focus up on savings challenges, mainly because... Um, I would rather have a challenge to save for a specific something. Yeah, saving challenges. I don't know. I still like them. Don't get me wrong. I do I like them. I'd just rather save for something specific and make it a challenge in itself. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I like, I do enjoy, I will say, I do enjoy having just a stack of money to, um, stuff at the end of the year when I count it, because that's like unexpected income, if you will. 
And I don't know. I think that that part is fun, but it's really hard to do savings challenges when like you use all your money <laughs> when you have to like living expenses for a family of five, sometimes six because my daughter's best friend who actually lives in the neighborhood literally comes over every weekend. So yeah, like just groceries alone is ridiculous. Um, but it's worth it. So it's just really hard to do saving challenges when so much of your income has to go to just living expenses. So I try not to make it, um, that prioritized at all because I'm not going to stress out over it when my kids are fed and my bills are paid and you know, the important things are taken care of. So that's why I like the saving challenges like I do for my vacation, um, where I have a challenge sheet to fill out as I go because it's a challenge in itself, but it is for a specific goal. So those I like, I like those a lot. I also like the 100 envelope challenge that I made. Um, and that's why I kind of just do that one and then um, any ones or fives or tens that I have left over in my wallet and that just be it and not stress our paychecks trying to make a challenge happen. I'm curious though about you guys. I did read somebody's comment. I don't know if you're watching um, about asking to try and do a saving challenge um, idea that you had. And I just might do that because it was very interesting. It was basically whatever day you get paid or say, for instance, the day I'm cash stuffing, you take the date that is. So if I'm cash stuffing on the 4th, I will put $4 from that specific pay or that income and put it away in an envelope. If it's the 23rd, then you do $23. Um, I think that's kind of cool. And, you, and that way, you know, you'll never stuff over $31 at a time and you will, um, know, you'll know in advance how much you have to put away for that. So that one I might do. <laughs> Not all snowflakes are perfect. Next question. That was from Kimberly Hill, by the way. I don't know if I said her name. So April Budgets. I'm a new subscriber. Love it here. Welcome. What was your hardest challenge when you first started your channel? <laughs> The camera angle. That is 100% the hardest challenge I ever had. <sighs> I didn't have equipment, you know? I didn't have equipment. I actually tried with an iPad. That didn't work out because I realized real quick it didn't have a lot of space on it. And then I tried with my old phone, which is actually what I'm using right now. I tried with my old phone and figuring out how to get a top-down angle was annoying. I ended up using a cardboard box, a stick, something really heavy like a book, and ugh, it was it was crazy. <laughs> it was so my hardest challenge starting out this channel was that, was figuring out how to film it. All right, so next question. Can't wait for the nail video Q&A. What type, and this is from Jesse Ifall. 
What type of work does your husband do? I know you say he drives a lot. Not sure that I've heard what profession. Also, can you show his woodworking? Does he sell local only? Okay. So, he is not comfortable with me telling exactly what he does. Because I've, I've asked this question from him before. And he's asked me not to, like, disclose the whole thing. So, what I'm do say about his profession is that he works for a company that makes a product, a medical product, um, that saves lives and that he then goes to hospitals all across our state and, um, he's not necessarily the one who sells the products. He's the one who teaches the doctors how to use the products, is there to assist as they use the products in surgeries and whatnot. So that's as vague as I can be, but also giving enough detail about it. So he's, yeah. He's in surgeries, he goes across the state to several hospitals and is helping doctors all over um, save people's lives. I hope you guys are enjoy watching this. I don't know if it's enjoyable or not, but I definitely enjoyed doing it. Oh my gosh, these are looking so adorable time for another question. All right. My question would be, this is from Cat Watches. Where do you get all your nail supplies, equipment, etc.? Your nails always look amazing. Well, Amazon. Everything. Amazon, the stand, Amazon, the nail, Amazon, Amazon, the blue tacky, Amazon, all of these are Amazon. All of these colors are Amazon. The nail tips also Amazon. Um, everything. Amazon. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll try and remember to link everything in the description box so that you guys can just have a quick link to it. So make it a little bit easier for you guys. All right. And I think it looks like there's going to be one more question. Wait, have I missed... When you got those cute, cute envelopes, they're so, so cute. Where did you get them? <laughs> I'm going to assume that you mean my envelopes, like the main ones. Um, those are mine. I drew them. And if you're curious on how I drew them, then there's an entire playlist on my channel. You are more than welcome to go watch me draw them with Sharpie markers. Sharpie markers, envelopes, that's it. That's basically it. Sometimes rhinestones, although now that I'm doing this method, I've kind of not been using rhinestones because it does not lay flat. But um, yeah, go feel free to go watch how I do them. But I made them and I got the blank envelopes from Amazon. I got the Sharpie markers from Amazon. I got the rhinestones from Amazon. I got the cardstock backing that I put in there, the silver cardstock, also Amazon. And I just draw them. So that's where they came from. And I think now that most of the ans the questions are answered, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse the rest of this for you guys. Finish these up, put a top coat on, and when I come back, it'll be putting them on.
All right, it's that time again to pick today's winner. This comes from the video that was posted yesterday for WTF Wednesday. Thank you everyone that commented on that video. Because of that, you are eligible to win a $15 Amazon gift card. So we're gonna choose that winner right now. There was 72 unique comments on that video. Let's see who won. Amy Shroom, I think. I have my favorite quote tattooed on my back, and in that moment, I swear we were infinite. I love that. Congratulations, Amy. You are our eighth winner, I think. And if you can just go ahead and email me at thrivingandchaosbudgeting at gmail.com, I will get you your $15 Amazon gift card as soon as possible. But we're not over yet. Just like every video, this one also has a chance to win a $15 gift card. So make sure that you're subscribed, leave a positive comment down below, and I will announce today's winner tomorrow in our cash stuffing video. Looking forward to it and good luck everyone. Back to the video. Okay, as far as my setup goes, I have this thing here that just holds my microphone. Yes, I used a pencil to hold it there. <laughs> and I'm recording top down, as you can see. I have it attached to this which holds all my stickers. I also have this, it's solid wood shelf that my hubby made me. That's where I keep my cash envelopes and things. Um, I have a Bible and some stuff to do with the kids. And I have puck lights underneath. I have a ring light to my right and another light to the left. And then I have all my markers, my book, more markers, doctor bills, <laughs> the stuff that I need for my envelopes, and then just some random things. And as you can see, that's my setup. It's not as big as I'm sure it looks on camera, but that is how you see me. And we are done. What do you guys think? Oh, wait a minute. No, I need to show it with my pajamas. Be right back. First, I'm going to give a glimpse of what my pants look like if I can get my leg up here. And then my shirt. Oh, isn't it cute? I'm so ready for Christmas now. <laughs> I feel like it's official when I have my Christmas nails on, so it's official, guys. Christmas is upon us, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered all the questions that you guys had, and I appreciate everyone that is still watching after this. I'm sure this is going to be a long video, but um, I appreciate it. Again, this video has a chance to win a $15 Amazon gift card if you will subscribe to my channel, leave a positive comment below, and I will announce the winner tomorrow in our cash stuffing. So I'm looking forward to it. Congratulations again to the winner. And I will see you guys in the next one tomorrow. Have a good night, guys. As always, until next time. Bye.